Hello and welcome back audience, my name is Massive Brad and welcome back to my FIFA 19 Southampton career mode. Now before we get into today's episode, I just want to say a huge big thank you for love and support on the channel. And as always guys, at the start of today's episode, we're quickly going to look at the games that lie ahead in today's episode. Now usually from this whole start of this Southampton series, we've played four games. Two of them we've physically played and you guys have seen highlights from. And two of them we've put into the hands of the EA gods and simulated them. Because we are coming to the end of the series, I've decided to change it up a little bit, guys. First of all, so it betters it for me, it also betters it for you, and it also gives us a chance of potentially still winning the Premier League. Now, if we were to flash back to the last episode of what I said, we were going to play Wolves, play Newcastle, play Bournemouth, and play West Ham all into these episodes for episode 13. Episode 14 was then going to include the game against Huddersfield. Then we were going to look over all the squad report. We were going to look at who won the Carabao Cup, who won the Champions League, who won the FA Cup. Look at all the competitions, see what people have won, see what teams won. Have a look at the top goal scorer. You guys get the gist of what we'd be doing in the last episode. But I've decided to change that up. Because as it stands right now, we are seven points behind Spurs. We've all played 33 games now. We moved into second position in the last episode after beating Liverpool. We're now two points clear on third position Liverpool. We've guaranteed us a place in the top six if we are to draw or beat West Ham. That is, without a doubt, we get a one point or we get three points. If we lose, Manchester United could still beat us. But what would have to happen is we'd have to lose the last Five games, United would have to win all of their five, then that would mean that we could be knocked down and out of the top six, which means we wouldn't be in a spot for European football next season, whether that's Champions League or Europa. Now, realistically, I have no doubt we're going to get some sort of points from today's episode, so I'm pretty much going to say we're going to finish in the top six. But because we're still seven points Behind Tottenham Hotspur, I've decided to change it up for these last two episodes. So in today's episode, there's only going to be three games. I thought instead of doing four games in this episode and one in the last, I'll do three in this episode, play three games, obviously play two and simulate one. And then in the last episode, we'll play both games. So to kind of bring this together for you guys, make it a little bit more easier, today's episode is going to include Wolves, Newcastle and Bournemouth. Now, I personally think we're probably better playing Wolves, simulating Newcastle and playing Bournemouth, but I'm not too sure where Newcastle are in the league. So I'm just going to say for now, that's what we're going to do. I may well change it in a moment and then I'll let you guys know. But for now, we're going to play the first game against Wolves. We're going to simulate the game against Newcastle and then we're going to play the game against Bournemouth. Then that's going to do it for this episode. But episode 13, bearing in mind, guys, I can't believe I'm about to say this. This is the second to last episode of this series we got this episode, then we got episode 14, and then this series on FIFA 19 is done. And within a week, you guys will be seeing FIFA 20 content, which is an absolute madness. But regardless, to explain on, on this topic a little bit more, for episode 14, we'll then have West Ham away from home in the Premier League and Huddersfield at St. Mary's Stadium for the last Premier League game in the Premier League. For the next episode, we're going to play West Ham and we'll play Huddersfield, so we'll play both of those games. There'll be no simulated games, and in the time where I would spend simulating games, we'll then look over the squad hub and see the growth of some players. We'll have a look who won the Champions League, the Europa, the Super Cup. We'll have a look at all the competitions, see what teams won what. And I just think instead of having four games in today's episode and one in the next, we've broke it down, so we've got three in today's episode and two in the next. And I think that kind of equals out and levels out a little bit more. Now, one thing I do want to mention at the start of today's episode, episode is episode 12 the last episode that you guys will have already seen by the time you're watching this i'm halfway through editing episode 12 and touch wood i am yet to see a glitch in the gameplay a glitch in the audio now that doesn't mean in the second half of the video there's going to be something wrong there but hopefully by the time you guys are seeing this video, you've already seen episode 12. And if you did see any glitches or any issues, you've let me know in the comment section on that video. But I am recording again with the new device. Obviously, if episode 12 has gone smoothly and I've edited it now and found no problems, and you guys have found no problems, then going forward for the rest of this series and all content in the future, including FIFA 20, is going to be spot on. We're going to have clear, crisp audio. We're going to have clear, smooth gameplay. And that is exactly 
what we want to be having. But up first, we've got Wolverhampton Wanderers. They did knock us out of the semi-finals in the Carabao Cup. Unfortunately, they won on away goals. I'm hoping we can bounce back and do a job against them in the Premier League, especially being at the St. Mary Stadium. Normally, I'd be wanting to play the away games and simulating the home games. But because we're coming to the end, of this series, I thought I'd rather be playing in front of the home fans, get the home fans behind us, make it loud, make it noisy. Whereas when we play the away games, if we're beating United or City or anyone, all you tend to hear is if we score a goal, it's not very loud. And there's just booze around the stadium because the almighty Saints turned up and done a job over the opposition. So as we were saying, guys, we've got Wolves up next. This is the lineup we are putting out against them. We've got Latore Martinez up top with Danny Ings in the striker positions. El Yanusi, Hoybier, Warprouts and Jennifer in the midfield with Bertrand, Avestigar, Bednarek and Valerie at the back and Angus Gunn between the sticks. The good news of these episodes as well is Romeo will be making his way back into the team. He probably won't play against Wolves. Probably not going to play him in the simulated game against Newcastle, but I will certainly put him in the team and play with him for the game against Bournemouth. But let's go ahead and get into this game against Wolves. I'm trying to think, guys. There's a few things I wanted to mention at the start of today's episode. My mind has gone completely blank. So, unfortunately, hopefully at some point in this video, I'll remember and be able to tell you guys. But at first, we're at the St. Mary's Stadium. Wolves have travelled down to the south of England. They're attempting to take three points back to Wolverhampton. We're not going to allow it. We're going to kick off today's episode with an incredible win. And hopefully... Keep pushing and putting the stress on Spurs to let them know that the Saints are still coming for them. Come on, lads. With only five games left in the Premier League, we've got no more other competitions, no FA Cup, no Champions League, no European football, no Carabao Cup. It's just the Premier League. We currently sit in second position. We're seven points behind Spurs, and that's still a hell of a gap to close down. Seven points. Unfortunately, I think just too many draws is going to be the reason. If we don't catch them, that'll be the only reason we do unfortunately suffer not winning the Premier League and finishing in second. But we still know we've got Liverpool and City not far behind us. We cannot afford to slip up, drop points, because I'm sure one of those teams will capitalise on it and potentially start knocking us down the pecking order. But as we get Danny Ings kicking us off in this first half period, let's get it on the way against Wolves. And let's hopefully look for a little bit of vengeance, a little bit of revenge after they did knock us out of the Carabao Cup semi-finals. Hoybier, Hoybier out wide now to Bertrand, who's looking at coming forward. Here's Bertrand going out wide now to El Yanusi. A little bit of skill here from El Yanusi, cuts back. Nice little dink here, looking for Jennifer towards the back boot. It's 1-0. Oh, God damn believe What a header from Jennifer. We are 1-0 up against Wolves. After 17 minutes, there's no stopping us now. We are like a bullet train. There's no slowing us down. We continue to push on, push on. Score goals and back important points. What a header from Jennifer into the top left corner. It's a beautiful header. Gets above Otto. Heads it home. And it's a beautiful goal. Tucked away. Postage stamp into that top left corner. Take a bow, Jennifer. Take a bow. Jean Martino up to Raul Jimenez. It's Dembele. Cutting in behind now with Ryan Bertrand. Nicely done. There goes Jennifer darting forwards now. Jennifer flying at these Wolves defenders. They've got nothing to stop and ball in. Hype is there. Misses it. El Yanusi to finish up. He does so. Well, I thought. I thought Hype here had screwed us. He missed it. I'm not sure who it was. It was either, I think, Latona Martinez or Danny Ames. The got in the way of his shot. He fluffed it. Let's have a look. Jennifer, beautiful ball in. Goes for the shot. It's Latoro Martinez. El Yanusi takes it down from his right to his left. Volleys at home. Nice bit of control there of his right foot. Drags it away from the player. Takes it onto his left foot. And buries it past Roy Patricio. And in the 43rd minute, we are 2-0 up against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Here's Jean Martino. Take it off. And nice done there, War Prowse. The referee... That was a good half. You know, the referee's going to blow for half time. We're going in 2 0 at the St. Mary's Stadium. We've been very, very impressive in that first half. Realistically, it could have been 3 or 4 0 by half time. We've absolutely dominated against Wolves. The match facts would clearly show that. I'm happy to jump back into the second half with exactly the same team. We've got Raul Jimenez kicking us off for this second half. Let's get it underway. And I honestly think we could double our scoreline here and potentially win this 4 0 if we continue the football. That we've played so far is Bertrand. Hoy with a nice ball out wide now to Bertrand, who's going to release El Yanusi down this left side. 
Here's how you lose. He's going to control. Flick it over. Takes up ball and now to Latorre Martinez who takes it first time. First of all, what a ball from El Yanusi. Nice bit of control. Flicks it over to Zed. It's the first time. Latorre Martinez hits it on a turn and 90 degree to a 180 degree. Puts his laces through it. Might have been a mistake there from Wolves, but they're still going to get through here. We've got to get Vestigard on this one. He was there, bro. Jimenez was there to follow up. Luckily enough for us, only puts it wide a goal. Valerie now going to come across. Valerie's going to take that ball. Dusan Tadic into Danny Ings. Danny Ings going to hold this ball up, play it over now to Nathan Redmond, who's going to be through on goal. Here comes Nathan Redmond to slot home. Oh, it's off the crossbar. Here's Doherty up to Den Donker. Savania. Down now to Doherty, through to Den Donker. Den Donker putting the ball in. Let's get there with Bednarek. Ball going to come in again. Just get rid of the Bertrand. Hoof it, good lad. Hoof it off field. And the referee's going to blow for full time. Well, what a start to today's episode. I did say at half time. I thought we could have doubled our score line. We unfortunately didn't. But we still played well in the second half. Wolves had probably one or two chances in the second half. They didn't really have many clear cut chances in the first half. But to come up against a team like Wolves, who did knock us out, they scored two against us in the Carabao Cup. We scored two, but unfortunately they did get an away goal. We played very, very well. Wolves are a difficult side. This was probably their best clear cut chance here with Sass. And he put it over the bar, unfortunately. A little bit of pressure there from Vestergaard. Angus Gunn would have had that one covered. But if we look at the stats, they had four shots not on target. I think three, I would have said. I would have said, sorry, three of their shots would have come in the second half. So only one in the first half. We had eight shots, five on target. So staying very consistent. Only putting three shots off target. Once again, he has become a spectacular player. I think that over the last four or five episodes, I think that's maybe like his sixth or seventh man of the match. Now, Mohamed El Yunusi once again, picking up man of the match with another. I think he's the last two times he's got man of the match. He's got a rating of 9.5, playing very well out on that left mid position. It's great to be rotating him with Nathan Redmond, because Nathan Redmond's a great player to come in, fast on the ball, great control. So in the second half, if they've tired up a little bit and Redmond comes on, he seriously wants to punish them. Whereas El Yanusi constantly making great runs, getting into the box. I couldn't ask for anything more from a player. But what a great start to today's episode. Up next, we've got Newcastle is the simulated game. Right guys, and here we are at match day. It's the simulated game in today's episode. So it's in the hands of the EA gods. And I am a little bit worried. Newcastle are nowhere to be seen. We'll take a quick look at where they are in the leaderboard. It looks like they are all 17th. Only two points ahead of the relegation zone. Watford, Cardiff and Huddersfield are currently the three teams going down. A little bit of a shock there for Watford. We just played Wolves who were down in 16th position. But we've got Bournemouth who were in 8th position for the last game of today's episode. That's one we've definitely got to play. And as we move up the board, Liverpool now clinging on by the skin of their teeth. Only four points ahead of Chelsea who could easily knock them out of a Champions League spot. Because we did get that win over Wolves, it means now we are guaranteed... A top six place. I'm a little bit shocked that Manchester United are down in seventh. I'm shocked the fact that Arsenal are down in 13th position. I'm quite shocked that Wolves and Watford are also so low down the Premier League. Normally doing very well in the Premier League and normally finishing mid-table. But as it stands right now, <sighs> Tottenham did win their last game. They beat Huddersfield. They were down in the bottom position in the Premier League. They beat them 4-1. So they still sit seven points ahead. Today's episode will clear up whether we have a chance of catching them or not. If we beat Newcastle and we beat Bournemouth, but Spurs win their next two games, it's impossible for us to catch them. So they will be crowned champions of the Premier League in today's episode. If we draw or lose to Newcastle up next, it's game over. Because if they win their game, they will move up to 78 points. We're on 68, meaning there's a 10-point gap. With three games to go, we could only get nine points. So we really need to up our game here. And unfortunately, it's out of our hands because it is the simulated game. But only one change, and that's Danny Ings for Dusan Tadic. I want to be playing my highest rated up top because it's a simulated game. And sometimes it does go down to rating. Not about who's in the scoring ways right now. But we've gone with Latorre Martinez and Dusan Tadic up top in the striker positions. 
El Yanusi, Hoybier, Ward Prowse, and Jennifer in the midfield. Bertrand, Vestergaard, Bednarek, and Valerie at the back with Angus Gunn between the sticks. There's nothing more for me to say. I'd love Martinez to get a goal or two in this game against Newcastle just because he has broke into the top five Premier League top goal scorers. I don't think he's probably going to catch Harry Kane and Mo Salah. I think they're in a race between themselves for that golden boot. But it'd be nice if he could finish in the top three. So as we get these players warmed up, Fingers crossed Martinez gets on the score sheet, but more importantly, we really want the win. We are a fast approach in 10 minutes. 10 minutes past, Lejeune picks up a yellow card in the 11th minute. Not much has happened in the first 25 minutes of this game. We're half an hour in and still nothing has happened. No goals, only the single yellow card. We're now into the second half. Come on, lads, we've got to up our game here. We seriously need to find the goal. 60 minutes in, and the only highlight... Is a yellow card from Lejeune. Carroll on for Jolaton. Rondon for St. Maximum. Ings coming on now for Dusan Tadic. Stevens for Vescon. El Yanusi scores in the 86th minute. And by the skin of our teeth, we've managed to beat Newcastle with four minutes to go. Absolute madness. We needed those three points to stay in this chase and keeping up with spares. And Mohamed Oyanusi, once again, probably picked up man of the match as well, goes on to score with only four minutes to spare. He scores and helps us on to victory. And we go on to beat Newcastle 1-0. Very well done indeed. Stevens come on for Vestigal on the 76th. Ings managing to come on for Dusan Tadic. I didn't think they'd have took Dusan Tadic off. Unfortunately, Latore Martinez doesn't get on the score sheet. Oyanusi does, but I really don't care. We got the win, and that's the important part. Well, after unfortunately advancing all the way to match day, we've now had the news that we really didn't want. We still believed we were in a title run to potentially being crowned Premier League champions. We were trying to battle spares, but unfortunately we were too strong. And after beating West Ham 2-0, you can see the news article there, Pochettino and Harry Kane, spares crowned Premier League champions. It's a little bit of a shame, it's a little bit heartbreaking because we've done so well in the Premier League. But if we can now finish in a top four position, I'll be happy with that because what an incredible thing we will have done at Southampton. You can see that Spurs are now 10 points clear on us. We're a game in hand, so even if we play Bournemouth, we move up to 74. Still putting us seven points behind them with two games to go. And obviously, if we win both games, it's only a maximum of six points, which means we'd potentially finish one point behind Spurs if they were to lose their last two and we were to win our last two. So unfortunately... We're not going to be Premier League champions this year, guys. We tried and tried, but on the day, we just didn't get enough points. But up next, we've got Bournemouth. We've got to keep our heads held high. We still have to remember we easily slip out from the top four. If we get the win against Bournemouth, I think we've pretty much secured ourselves a place in the Champions League next season. Only one change to the team from the last game against Newcastle, and that is Romeo coming back from injury finally and taking over for Ward Prowse. But we're going with Latona Martinez and Dusan Tadic up top in the striker positions. We've got Romeo and Jennifer in the midfield. Bertrand Vestergaard, Bednarek and Valerie at the back with Angus Gunn between the sticks. It's the last game in today's episode, guys. And earlier on I talked about, I forgot to mention something at the start of the episode. It slipped my mind. I've remembered what it is. So if you guys can stick around till after the Bournemouth game, I'll talk about it before we end today's episode. But right now... We've got another three points up for grabs. We're at the St. Mary Stadium, and hopefully if we score plenty of goals. The stadium will be roaring. It'll be noisy. Everyone will be bouncing. And I'm sure that last game of the season against Huddersfield, who are currently down in bottom position, I'm sure if we get the win there and secure us a place in the Champions League next season, the roof will be taken off St. Mary Stadium. It's been a it's long a time really since we've won all of our played games and won simulated games. Stadium. Well... We started off today's episode beating Wolves. We simulated the game against Newcastle and won that 1-0. So if we beat Bournemouth for the last game in today's episode, it, uh, it wins all around and will really put me in a great mood going into the last episode of this Southampton Korean mode. I can't believe the last episode. It just it seems crazy. Only 14 episodes ago, we launched the Southampton Korean mode. 14 episodes later after the last the next episode and we're all done it's over finished finito and we've been moving on to fifa 20 which is just an absolute madness but let's get this game kicked off let's get off to a great start in this first half with latona martinez kicking us off let's get it underway and let's do it with bournemouth lads play it down nicely down here's latona martinez 
El Yanusi takes it past one. Like, I'm thinking now, looking for Jennifer Romeo's there. Oh, it's wide a goal. Big save there from Begovic. Romeo on his first game back. Nearly scoring an unbelievable header between the legs of Begovic. Jennifer's there. Tadic with a beautiful touch there to get round Nathan Aki. Still going. Little ball in now from Dusan Tadic towards El Yanusi at the back post. Who sadly puts it over the bar. And cleared out is Valerie. Hoybier. The Toro Martinez looks to Ben Ward. Oh, it's off the crossbar. Toro Martinez, what a shot. Hoybier. El Yanusi up the line as it's intercepted by Brooks. Referee's going to say half time is here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going in level terms at nil nil. Both sides coming out with, with decent chances. We've had six shots, two on target. So double their shots and double their shots on target. They've had a little bit more of the ball, but haven't done too much with it. It does seem right now that Eddie Alves sent his men out to play possession football, which is not going to work against us because we've had, you know, 30, 40% of the ball sometimes and we've won three or four nil. So it's Bournemouth kick us off in this second half. The best hope that they've got something in the tank here. Ball in now to do some Tadic. He tries to head home, but it's an easy save for Begovic. That is the problem right now. Bournemouth are solid at the back and, and that's where we seem to be struggling. Intercept that ball, Valerie. Nice done. Jennifer. Play it round nice lads. Through the middle now to El Yanusi. He's going to cut back onto his left foot. El Yanusi! It's 1 0! Bournemouth, you may have more of the ball, but it means nothing. It means nothing. As El Yanusi stares the ball, mixes the cake. He slots one home. Look at this beautiful cutback. Round Klein he goes. And Benny's there. I thought he was going to go for the far post. Instead, I flicked it back to the near post. And beat Begovic in his near post. And I certainly shouldn't be beating him from there. Four goals in the Premier League for Mohamed El Yanusi. And what a player he has become under our leadership. Still a Toro Martinez. A little bit of a dance and trickery there. But Klein was all over that one. Win at Vestergaard. Nicely done. Straight up now to Dusan. Into the Toro Martinez. A little bit of trickery there. Latoro Martinez opens up. It's a goal for Latoro Martinez. You cannot let him have that kind of space. He didn't have that space. We made it. And at that time, when we're making the space, look at this here. A little bit of skill there. Shifted it. A little bit of a slide to the right. Onto the right foot. Benny's it in the bottom left corner. Maybe Begovic's vision wasn't too great. Memfam was kind of in the way of the ball as Latoro Martinez made his way into the centre of the goal. But his 14th goal in the Premier League. What a signing he's been. And we are 2 0 up in the 68th minute. Redmond trying to get past Klein. Little dink in now towards Josh Shims at the back post. He's going to be headed away from Rico. Four minutes. Come on, ref. There we go. We've done it. An impressive three victories and a guaranteed place in the Champions League. We have done wonders since coming in to the Saints. That's a man there I would definitely be signing from Inter Milan on a permanent loan. He's been fabulous. 50k a week. I said we should have paid him double. We should have paid him triple. He's been absolutely unreal. It's going to be sad to see him go, and he probably is going to be a player I would look at in FIFA 20. He's been spectacular. He's like, for me, he's like a Bobby for me, you know. He's up and down the pitch. He's quick with his feet. He's got a powerful shot. And most importantly, he likes to pick up assists. He's great with putting through balls, long passes, short passes. Doesn't matter what type of pass it is. That man, Latoro Martinez, is the man to give you it. Ten shots, six on target compared to... Eddie Howe's team's four shot, one on target. Latoro Martinez picks up man of the match with a 9.5 rating. And we managed to win all three games in today's episode. What an episode that has been, ladies and gentlemen. Right, guys, and here we are back at the Central for the final time in today's episode. I've now advanced all the way to the first game in the next episode, which, of course, is on the 4th of May. We're into the month of May, the last month for Premier League football. We're facing off against West Ham. We'll take a little look at the calendar in just a moment's time. But as I said earlier on, guys, there was something that I want to remind you guys. And I want to remind you at the start of today's episode. So I'm hoping a few of you are still here listening now. But it's about the community page. Obviously, I've told you guys so many times, you know, when you're on my channel, you'll have home, videos, playlists. And then there's one called community page. 
If you don't get involved in the community page, now is the time to do that because I post straw polls, or they're called YouTube polls. I post general comments telling you guys whether it's schedules, ideas for up and coming series, even sometimes asking you guys what you'd like to see on a game. And I know over the last couple of days, I've posted a few posts on the community page talking about various things. Now, what I'll do is I'll pull up the community page just now so I can go through a few of these topics with you guys. And then obviously you could go to the community page yourself and have a little look. You can also get involved in if there's any straw polls, you can drop some comments. But if we just look at the last few, so I posted one two days ago and it was a video schedule. And I said, this may change, but as it stands right now, Southampton career mode episode 11 should have come out on the 6th of September. Episode 12 should have been the 9th. Episode 13, which is this one, I do believe. Yeah, episode 13. You should be watching this on the 11th of September, which is Wednesday. And then the very last episode, episode 14 of the Southampton career mode, the final episode should be out in two days on Friday the 13th of September. Oh, Friday the 13th. Bad luck day. I've also said then on the 16th of September, which is the Monday... I may take this day to upload me playing FIFA 19, but with face cam. So there's a chance, guys, the last episode of the Southampton Career Mode, episode 14, that might be face cam, that also might not be face cam. Unfortunately, my green screen hasn't come just yet. I could do it without green screen, but I'd rather start to learn with green screen so when we get into FIFA 20, I understand now how to edit it, how to use it, and, and understand it properly. So there's still a chance, but if there's not, on the 16th, I will be uploading a video. It may be just me playing FIFA 19 as a quick match or pro clubs or something like that. And I'm going to do it with face cam, edit it so I can learn how to edit face cam and put it alongside what I already do. On the 18th of September, which is the Wednesday, I've said I may take this day to live stream me playing FIFA 19, but with face cam. And this is to trial the charity live stream. In the month of October, guys, I will be doing over on twitch.tv forward slash massive Brad. It's down below in the description. I'll be doing a 24 hour live stream in hope to raise £5,000 for Macmillan Cancer Support. Now, obviously, you, get, you guys that have been around on the channel for a while may know about my dad's story. If you don't, you can certainly go and find it on the community page. And then after that, we've got the 20th of September, which is the Friday, the FIFA 20 Liverpool Green Mode trailer drops. And then on the 24th of September at 3 o'clock British time, so UK time, BST. If you want to go and check it out, guys, whatever time zone you are, put in BST, which is British summertime, to whatever you might be. And then look at what time it would be in your country when it's 3 a.m. in the morning here because it launches at midnight. And by the time I've recorded, edited and uploaded, I think it's going to be about 3am. That's going to be your first episode of the Liverpool Cream Mode on FIFA 20. That's going out on the 24th of September. You're then going to have episode 2 on the 25th, episode 3 on the 26th, and episode 4 on the 27th. That's all I've planned for with this video, video, video schedule so far. I also asked you guys about, if I just read this out quickly... Definitely go and check this on the community page, guys. But I'm doing a 24-hour charity stream with a target of £5,000. This was originally planned to be in the month of September, but unfortunately, it's being pushed back to October. The reason it's being pushed back, guys, is because we're already pretty much nearly the second week in September. We've got FIFA 20 dropping, which for my channel and you guys, I need to grind as hard as I can on FIFA 20 to try and grow the channel the best I can, to reach out to a new audience, a new a new genre of people that will find my content interesting to help me grow the channel. I really need to put a lot of time and effort into the FIFA 20 content. So doing a 24-hour live stream, why doing that, is going to be very difficult. It's also the fact, unfortunately, I have had something come up. When FIFA drops, I'm actually not going to be in my home. I'm going to be somewhere else. But don't worry, guys, I'll still be able to make videos. But it won't be visible for me to be able to do the 24-hour live stream. Regardless, I've moved it back to October. Once we get close to the time, I'll be dropping a video telling you guys how you can donate, how you can get involved, where you can find the video, and so on. I've said I aim to raise £5,000 for Macmillan Cancer Support, as I sadly lost my dad to cancer a few years back. He raised money himself by doing something called Brave the Shave. Now, Brave the Shave, if you guys go to the community page, I've left the video link. Brave the Shave is where you hit a target, so you might set yourself a £1,000 target. If you hit that £1,000, 
So say thank you to everyone, and because you've hit the target, you shave your head bald. You go completely bald. Now, unfortunately, my dad's situation, because he had cancer, he was already starting to hair. So he was quite happy to shave his head because his hair was coming out on his pillow and, and falling out throughout the day. So he was quite happy to shave his head and do it for a good cause. He raised himself money and got to a target of, I think, nearly £2,000 in the end. I've left a link to his story if you guys want to go and see it. But I've then put, to honour my dad, I will not only be streaming for 24 hours for the Macmillan Game Heroes, which is where you stream for 24 hours, it's called the Macmillan Game Heroes, but I'll also be joining him in shaving my head if we hit £5,000 live on stream. So if you guys are watching it and you're watching it as we hit the £5,000 target, my girlfriend will then come in and shave my head completely bald live for you guys to watch. It does scare me to say this because I'm someone that's had pristine hair from the age of 12 and regularly get it cut to keep it smart and sharp so to go completely bald will be a massive change and shock to the system but it will be well worth it. From the age of 12 guys I've always had the latest style whether you know it was spiked hair whether it was you know a line in the hair whether it was a night tick I've always had whatever was in trend I've always tried to keep my hair smart I've always looked after it wash it a lot. So to wake up the next day, feel my head and have no hair and be completely bald, it will be one hell of a shock to the system. But the fact I can wake up as well and know that we raised £5,000 for charity, I know that is a massive number. And if you guys can donate anything from a penny to a pound to £10 to £100, it'll be absolutely unbelievable. And will honestly mean so much to me if we can raise a target of £5,000. Plus, you guys get to see me go bald live on stream, which would be pretty funny for the majority of you guys i will be making a video about the stream closest to the time and talking about how you guys can donate support and any donations will go a long way guys whether it's a penny 50p a pound they will go a long way but to also thank you guys i'll be given prizes which will come out of my own pocket it's important you know this guys i've seen lots of streamers where they donate prizes back to you guys for helping but it comes out of the money of the charity that's not going to happen. Every prize that I give away will be coming out of my own pocket. And I've clearly stated in capital letters, none of the prizes will come out of the money raised. It'll come out of my pocket. But what are some of the current ones that I have thought of? What do you think? So the targets are this so far. When we hit £100, I'm going to give away a, a hoodie and t-shirt from my clothing line. When we hit £500, I'll potentially either give away a copy of FIFA 20 on Xbox, PlayStation or PC. If we hit £1,000, I will order off Amazon the hottest chilli in the world and eat it live on stream as well. Yesterday in a local shop, I saw chilli shots. Hot chilli shots. I will do two shots of hot chilli as well as eating the world's hottest chilli. That's probably going to kill me off for a couple of hours without a doubt. If we hit £2,500, I will be giving away a desktop PC that runs an i7 processor, a 520 gig SSD, real good computer, real fast, will run your games. So if we hit two and a half grand, I'll be giving away a desktop PC. And then if we hit £5,000, I will shave my head bald live on stream for you guys to watch. And that's something that I want to mention. Obviously, if you guys go over to the community page, if you're on my channel, you've got home, videos, playlists, community, channels, and about Click the community page, and this is where I can post videos, I can do a poll, I can do images, I can give you guys an update on what's happening on the channel, mention something that's going on in my life. So definitely go and give the community page a, a little look and, and see what you guys think. Obviously there's another poll there, or sorry, not a poll, there's another comment there about a mask and, you know, I've got a few ideas in the pipeline now for FIFA 20, but is there any series or concepts you guys would like me to do? If you've got an idea of a new series and you'd like me to maybe look at it, Definitely go and post on there because, kid you guys not, the idea of One Season Wonder was taken from two of you guys, two viewers' ideas mixed together, which created One Season Wonder, which I thought was a pretty good series and a great concept. But that's something I wanted to mention, guys. Definitely go and give the community page a little look. Definitely go and give some of the comments a thumb on what you think. But I will be releasing a video later into the year, more probably starting first week of October, maybe the second week of October, and I'll probably love to stream at the end of October for 24 hours straight. So it's going to be massive, guys, and potentially if we hit the target of £5,000, 
well, there'll be a hoodie, a t-shirt, a copy of FIFA, and a PC given away. I'll eat the world's hottest chilli, and I'll wake up in the morning bald, which I'm sure will be funny to watch back on live stream. But that is going to be it for today's episode, guys. And if you have enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up for me. Don't forget to drop your comments down that subscribe button. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family. And I've been Massive Brad. Peace out.